NEB TV, what's trending in science. Welcome to NEB TV. Today, I'm joined by Yan Zhu, who is an application and product development scientist here at NEB, and we are talking about qPCR. In our Science in 60, Yan is going to give us an overview of qPCR. Then we'll hear about a novel method that was developed by NEB researchers to analyze large amounts of qPCR data. This method was used in the development of our Luna qPCR product portfolio. And lastly, we'll answer some questions we've received from customers on our Lunar products. Are you ready? Yes. Great. Let's get started. In contrast to PCR, where the detection of a target sequence occurs at the end of a reaction, qPCR monitors DNA amplification as the reaction progresses. In qPCR assays, reaction progression is monitored by an increase in fluorescent signal. The fluorophore can be a double-stranded DNA binding dye or covalently attached to a target-specific probe. In dye-based assays, the dye fluoresces when bound to double-stranded DNA, but displays a much weaker fluorescence in the presence of single-stranded DNA. This results in increased fluorescent signal as the reaction progresses and double-stranded DNA is formed. In probe-based assays, fluorescence is generated by the separation of a dye quencher pair during amplification by cleavage of the probe or by other means of separation. Each method relies on the detection of a fluorescent signal over background and determination of the cycle, CQ, where this occurred, allowing relative or absolute quantification of the target. We examine the Luna mixes along with a variety of commercially available mixes on a broad set of targets following manufacturer recommendations. By including a 5-log dilution of template and a no-template control, all run in triplicate, 18 different qPCR curves were generated per target. Each target was also run twice by two different users. Because this data set became quite large, we needed to create a better, more scalable way to visualize our results. We started by plotting the calculated efficiency of the standard curve against the delta CQ, which is the distance between the last template dilution and the no template control, thereby translating the 18 wells worth of data per target into a single dot. By providing guidelines around the typically accepted values for these parameters, for example, a 90 to 110 percent efficiency and a delta CQ of three or greater, this created a graphical visual we refer to as dots and boxes. However, it didn't quite capture all of the relevant details of each run. In order to represent additional information, the overall quality of the qPCR curves was scored on a scale from 1 to 5. This scoring method was built upon previously published work by Hall et al., which encompassed factors such as curve sigmoidality and triplicate CQ tightness. The quality score was then used to define the size of the dot, where the larger dot represented a higher quality score. This analysis method allowed us to quickly compare results across multiple targets or conditions and across a large data set in order to better observe trends. For example, here we see the data set that includes the Luna Universal qPCR Master Mix compared to a variety of other commercial mixes designed for DNA dye-based qPCR, for example, Cyber on a total of 18 unique genomic and cDNA targets run in triplicate by two different users. Across these 36 experiments, we see the strong performance of the Luna mix, where 86% of the experiments yielded high quality results that fall in the box. Similar results were observed for all Luna mixes, and these dots and box visuals can be found on each of the individual product pages. We've run thousands of qPCR experiments and looked at curve after curve to make the best possible qPCR reagents. We hope the work that we did will enable the research you'll do. One of the most common questions we receive about our Luna qPCR kits is whether or not they work 
with different QPCR machines or instruments. These kits have been designed specifically to work with a wide range of instruments. Um, they can work um, in instruments that do not require a passive reference die, those that require low concentration passive reference dies, or those that require high concentration passive reference dies. They can also be used uh, with standard and fast cycling conditions. Another common question we receive is why is the Luna QPCI mix blue? So this mix contains an inert reference dye that gives it a clear blue color. This colored appearance makes it easier to identify which wells of a QPCR plate have been loaded with reagents. And this can be very difficult with the small well size and opaque nature of many 96 and 384 well QPCR plates. The blue dye has been studied extensively in both QPCR and PCR, and it does not inhibit or interfere with QPCR detection. Another common question we receive is whether the universal uh, probe master mix can be used in multiplex reactions. And the answer is yes. We have tested uh, three amplicons successfully using the mix. Um, and you want to start by choosing um, different fluorophores that are detected in different channels on the, um, PC, on the QPCR instrument. Um, then you want to test each amplicon separately and individually in a singleplex reaction. Um, when you multiplex them, if any one amplicon looks like it's deteriorating compared to its singleplex results, then you want to optimize. Um, one of the easiest things to optimize is primer concentration. So you can start by increasing the primer concentration uh, for targets that are of low, ab low abundance and decreasing the primer concentration for targets that are of high abundance. Um, for additional tips on how to multiplex, please contact us at info at neb.com. So Yan, thanks so much for joining me today. Sure, thank you. And thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, please let us know.